Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. It's another edition of the Daily Edification, the Daily Exaltation, coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai Baal Shem, Merkach All praises and glory is definitely due. Now I'm going to call this video, Make Peace with Your Father. Make Peace with Your Father. And when I say your father, I mean your biological father, your earthly father. Because you're in this knowledge, you're in this truth to make peace with our Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai, who is known as the Prince of Peace. But we should not forget, if he's still alive, our earthly father, our biological father. Now, a lot of us Israelites, you know, especially young men, we got a problem with our fathers, you know, because basically our fathers have been, especially if the father and mother split, they have been demonized. The fathers have been demonized by our mothers. Our mothers told us all kind of negative negativity concerning our fathers. Okay? Well, the scriptures speak about coming into this truth, being a new man. Let's get that. Colossians 3 and 10. A new man renewed in what? Renewed in knowledge. Okay? Colossians 3 and 10. Let's read that. It says, well, let's start at nine to get the whole idea. It says, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, part of the deeds of the old man was to talk nonsense about your father. You know, you, you listen to your mother. And if you'd have your mother tell it, there, there, like there was nothing positive about your father. Your father was totally negative. And it makes you wonder, well, if my father was so negative, why the hell did my mother get, get, get together with him? What was it about my father that, you know, that my mother got with, got with him? Okay? And I'm speaking in general. I'm speaking to you brothers out there. You know, you should ask yourself that question. You know, you listen to your mother. You know, that's assuming you weren't raped. You know, or, 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 or not you, but your mother wasn't raped and you came along. You know, well, that's, that's something totally different, you know, because that can happen. You know, offspring, offspring can come by rape. But I'm assuming it's a, a normal, natural father and mother relationship, right? Well, you know, as soon as you were born, not too long after you were born, your father and your mother split up, right? And then your mother... She'll tell you all kind of negativity about your father. Your father was this, your father was that. Like that song, Papa Was a Rolling Stone, which is one of the most negative songs ever made about the so-called black man. I hate that damn song, man. Okay? You listen to that song, you think the mother, mama was an angel, you know? She was totally righteous. Everything was on Papa. Papa was an asshole. Brothers, as the scriptures say, we are renewed in this knowledge. Okay? Let's read the next verse. Colossians 3 and 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So we're renewed in this knowledge. And part of having this knowledge is knowing that our fathers was under the curse. Okay? Our fathers were under the curse. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 28. As Israelites, our fathers was under the curse. And you know, one of the main reasons why you should honor your father, as it is written in the scriptures that we are to honor our father, then it says our mother, but the father comes first. Make note of that. One of the main reasons we're supposed to honor our father is because of our fathers, brothers. We are Israelites. Think about that. Your mother could be an Israelite and your father of another nation. Guess what? You're screwed. Okay? Okay. Your, your nationality as a Hebrew Israelite is determined by your father. So that's one reason alone why you should, no matter what kind of relationship you had with your father, why you should honor your father. And that's something I strongly believe in, man. I didn't have the greatest relationship with my father growing up because my father was so strict. And I felt he was too, too strict on me, you know, for the... For the uh, uh, the period of time I had my father in, in my life. Because there was a period of time my father really wasn't around because he had, you know, we were living in the islands and he was working up here in America and he had to send money back to the islands and, you know, we were poor. 
So that portion of my life, I didn't have my father. But when my father came into my life, he was like a drill sergeant, man. And I, I, I got to say, I, I didn't hate him, but I, I didn't like him either. <laughs> you know, and I actually told him that. And years later, when I came into the truth, I, I had a good conversation with my father. I said, um, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't like how you were. You were so strict. And, and, and then I said to him, I said, I wish I could be more like you, be, be straightforward, because that's how my father is. Like I said, he's like a drill sergeant. He's straightforward, you know. And, and then my father, he looked at me, he said, look, you can if you want to. You know, plus he got that voice, you know. He, he said that to me. And then I, I explained to him, I said, now that I'm, you know, uh, uh, learning this truth, you know, being in this knowledge, I understand that's the way a man is supposed to be. Straightforward. You know, like my father. And uh, uh, he, he was happy to hear that, you know. And then not too long ago, because this was years ago he told me that, you know, we had that conversation. This was years ago. But recently, about maybe less than a year ago, maybe about five months ago, six months ago, all of a sudden, man, my father, he, you know, I was talking to him and he said, he said, son, God will bless you, son. God will. He just came out the blue and said, God will bless you, son. God will bless you. And that moved me, man, because when I grew up with my father, you know, when I was spending time with him, he never talked about the Most High, never talked about God, never. Only one time I saw my father, they, there was this commercial on TV and they were making fun. Basically, they were making fun of the Most High. And my father said, they, they better watch what they're, what they're, I, f I forgot all, you know, really how he said it. Basically, he said, they better watch what they're doing, making fun of God like that. Something like that, he said. And I took note of that, you know, by that time I was like in the truth, maybe my second year, maybe my third year in the truth. And I spent my father, you know, he came around, I spent uh, some time with him. This was in Brooklyn, you know, he came, came up on vacation and I spent some time with him and I, I made note of him saying that, you know, and I was happy about that. You know, that proves he kind of, cause for a while there, man, I thought my father didn't believe in the most high, <laughs> you know, but when I heard that, even though, even though he, uh, you know, he believes the Most High, probably believes he's a so-called white man. But when I heard that, I said, at least he believes in the Most High, you know. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, brothers. So my father, man, he just said to me, he said, he said, uh, uh, God will bless you, son. God will bless you. I got this car in front of me. He's playing that, that horror music, you know, if you can hear it in the background. Anyway, he said, God will bless you, son. And I remember feeling real elated about that, feeling real great about that. And I'm about to show you a scripture that backs that up. But anyway, going back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, one of the main reasons why your father treated you the way that he did is because he's under the curse. As a Hebrew Israelite, he's under the curse. And we, being renewed in this knowledge, pursuant to uh, Colossians 3 and 10, we're supposed to understand that. So we're supposed to give our pops leeway, man. We're supposed to work with our father. Make, like, this, like the lesson, the title of the lesson, make peace with your father, man. All right, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Let me go to the, uh, uh, the 54th verse. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye, now these are the curses, right? You go in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 15, it tells you all these curses shall come upon us. For those of you that are new, I'm going to read it. I'm going to go right to it. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it, shall, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God or the Lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what I'm about to read is a curse that came upon our fathers, okay? Deuteronomy 28 and 54. Uh, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. And, and that's why the so-called black man and the so-called black woman can't get along, okay? It goes back to the curses, all right? And I'm reading one of the curses right now. Yeah, that, yeah, that dude left, so... Beautiful. I don't have to hear that fucking horror music. Anyway, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom 
and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. The remnant of his children which he shall leave. That's why our fathers left. And in most cases, our fathers couldn't get along. You know how hard it is to get along with the so-called black woman. Okay, there's tons of movies that show you that. The so-called black woman, man, she's, she's hell-bent on that feminist attitude. Feminism pretty much killed the so-called black family, all right? Feminism, and that's part of the curses too. A woman shall compass a man, all right? So the point is, brothers, we're supposed to know all this knowledge, and we're supposed to use that knowledge, right, in, in uh, uh, making amends with our father. We're supposed to understand. Let me get back to Colossians, okay? We're supposed to understand why our father treated us the way he did. Especially when we come into knowledge, because we're renewed. Colossians 3 and 10. And have put on the new man, so you're a new man when you come in this truth. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And one of the things you're supposed to understand, brothers, one of the things you all are supposed to understand is why our father did what he did. All right? Why our father did what he did, why he split, you know? So, so you can't hold that grudge against your father, seeing that you're now in the truth, okay? You got to make peace with your father. That is the point of this lesson. You got to make peace with your father. You got to put on the new man, renewed in knowledge. As a matter of fact, let me go to the main scripture. And I've been, you know, I was reading the scripture earlier. And it's a very powerful scripture indeed. Uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, the third chapter. And um, let me start at, uh, uh, let me start at the first verse. It's also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. It says, Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. For the Lord have given the father, for the Lord have given the father honor over the children and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. And like I said, one of the main reasons to make peace with your father is because of your father, brothers. You're an Israelite. Don't you brothers forget that, man. I don't care what kind of problem you got with your father in the past. You're in the truth now. You're renewed in this knowledge. Right? Pursuant to Colossians 3 and 10, you make peace with your father. If your father is, uh, if your father is still alive, make peace with your father. Make peace with your father. Heed my words, man. Make peace with your father. Okay? For the Lord, I can't say it enough. For the Lord have given the father honor over the children and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Because Jake don't have no problem honoring the mother. They'll honor the, on, honor the mother till, till the cows come home. But what about your father, man? You don't hear too many Jakes talking about their father. You act like, like your mother was asexual, you know? Like she gave birth to you without your father. Nah, it takes two to tango, man. Make peace with your father. You got a father out there. Okay? And it's because of your father you're a Hebrew Israelite, man. What, you think your mother carries the seed? Uh-uh. Not in this thing of ours. In this thing of ours, we're not so-called Jews over here. So-called Jews, they believe that bullshit. The lineage comes from the mother. That's bullshit. The lineage comes from the father. So because of your father, you're a Hebrew Israelite. So that's the, one of the main reasons why you should honor your father, no matter what kind of uh, rapport you have with your father. Okay? Just on that alone. So let's read on. It says, Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. Did you, did you catch that, brother? Brothers? <laughs> Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. Now, we have the Day of Atonement, right? Where we want the Yahweh Shem Yahushua to forgive our sins, right? Well, making or honoring your father, making peace with your father, is an atonement for sins. The same, the same uh, result you get from the Day of Atonement, you get from making peace with your father. You get from honoring your father. Okay? I just read it. The scriptures don't lie, man. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. Make peace with your father. Don't be cursing out your father. We had one guy who came in the truth. I, to, I tell you about that guy, Yumyun. Okay? And by the way, Yumyun and Apostle Tahar was tight. They were tight. Them two was like two peas in a pod. And I'm not hyping shit up. I'm not... I'm not... Uh, 
What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not hyping shit up, all right? Them two were tight, okay? I was, I know, because I was back there, all right? Yum Yum and Apostle Elder Tahar. <laughs> I know if, he, if he's listening, he's probably cracking up. Anyway, this, this, this nigga Yum Yum, this, this moron, he put a curse on his father just because his father, he was a so-called Haitian. He was of the tribe of Levi, this, that Yum Yum character. And by the way, Yum Yum means right. His name was Yum Yum Rakar. Can you believe it? Meaning the right spirit. Nah, he had the wrong spirit because he put a curse on his father, man. Just because his father couldn't see the truth, didn't want to hear the truth. He puts a curse on his father. Not too long after that, you know what happened to that nigga? He got shot in the back. Almost died, man. When we went to see him in the hospital, this dude was, he was as, almost as big as a house. I'll never forget it. Then I looked at Apostle Elder Tar. He was looking down at him. And it looked like Apostle Elder Tar went to cry. And this was when Apostle Elder Tar was young, man. No grays, nothing. Just young. Young, virile, strong man, you know? Which he still is. But he was even stronger back then. <laughs> All right? And he looked down at uh, Yum Yum and he, he looked like he wanted to cry. Okay? Because he loved Yum Yum so much, you know? But the, we believe that one of the main reasons he got shot in the back because he put a curse on his father. You don't do that. Okay? So, so don't, you brothers out there, don't disrespect your father, man. And of all the videos that, are, that I've made, I think this is one of the most important videos I can make. Because that's how you get real blessings, you brothers out there that got your, your father still around. Go to, I don't care what, how many states he's over. Call him or something. You know, he might say, well, what, why the fuck you calling me? Dad, I'm just calling you to make peace with you. Dad, I love you. No matter what, be the bigger man. Dad, I love you. You know, you're my father. Well, why you love me? I, I've been nothing but a nigga to you. Whatever he might say. Well, I love you because you're my father. You brought me forth on this earth. And you may not know it, you a Hebrew Israelite, I'm a Hebrew Israelite because of you. You know, however you talk to your father, all right, just fill in the blanks. You get the idea. Make peace with your father, man. Don't, 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 don't pop style on your father, man. You know, make peace with your father. Okay, let's read on. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. And he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Like I said, Jake ain't got no problem honoring that mother. Well, we ain't talking about the mother here. We talking about the father. Honor your father, man. The scriptures say, honor thy father and thy mother. The father comes first, man. All right? Because I know, I know you Jakes out there, you got a problem with your father. You, you praising your mother all the live long day, but when it comes to your father, you act like, like the dude never existed. You got to stop that, man. Whoso, whoso honor of his father shall have joy of his own children. Check that out. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. Let me read that again, man. Whoso honor of his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. So is that a good enough reason for you to make peace with your father? Don't you want your prayers to be heard? What if you, you end up in a, a real dire predicament? And the first thing I would do if I end up in a dire predicament, I pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai to deliver me. And Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, he might look at the fact that when my father, you know, when I had chance to make peace with my father, I never did. I treated my father like shit. I talked shit about my father and he may not deliver me. But guess what? That ain't the case with me. I made peace with my father. My father put a blessing on me. He told me, God will bless you, son. There, the phone had to chime on that. He told me, God will bless you, son. He blew my mind when he said that, man. Because I ain't never heard my father talk like that. So if, and every time I think about that, brothers, I feel good, man. <laughs> like Stephanie Mills. I feel good. <laughs> you know? Or like James Brown. I feel good. Yeah, man, my father gave me a blessing, man. My father... My pops gave me a blessing. How about that? Okay? That's what you brothers got to get. You wonder why you're catching all kind of hell and, and shit ain't working out for you? Look at how you're treating your pops, man. How are you treating your father? Huh? How's your rapport with your father? Do you, do you curse your father underneath your breath? If you do, you better stop it. You better stop it, man. Honor your father. Make peace with your father. Whoso honor of his father shall have joy of his own children, 
and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. That's scripture. Okay? That's scripture. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. <laughs> you better believe I'm excited, man. Because because that's one of the ways to get blessings in this thing of ours. If your father's still alive, make peace with your father. Stop talking shit about your father. Stop listening to your psychotic mother. In most cases, your father couldn't get along with your mother because she was a bitch. Let me tell you like it is. Let's keep it real here. Because she was a bitch, man. That's why your father hauled ass. Got out of Dodge. Because of your mother. All right? And you know, some of you know your mother's a demon, man. Yet you're talking shit about your father. You're listening to your mother talk shit about your father. And put her in a place. The next time your mother come talking shit about your father, put her in a place. Put that bitch in a place. Okay? Our, this thing of ours is, is a patriarchy. It's not a matriarchy. It's a patriarchy. We're talking about the fathers here. Okay? Yahweh Shai always talked and boasted about his father. Okay? So there you go, man. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. And he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. But you notice the father comes first. Okay? I'm not telling you to uh, to uh, dis dishonor your mother or c curse out your mother. You know, but put her in a place. You can respectfully put your mother in her place, especially when your mother is talking bad about your father because the relationship didn't work out. And in most cases, the relationship didn't work out because of your mother. Because she was a psychotic bitch, okay? All right? Let's read on. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father. Ooh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. That's a cut. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Now, of course, it's talking about your spiritual father, but it's also talking about your physical father. Hey, if you can help your physical father out, help him out. Don't hold no grudge against him. Help the man out. If he needs some money, give him some money, man. Take care of him. That's your father. Okay? I don't care what he's done to you. And please don't come on my comment board tell well, you know, my father did. I don't want a fucking head, man. Make peace with your father, man. The scriptures say all men of sin can be forgiven except the sin of blasphemy. Did your father commit blasphemy? I don't think so. Now, if your father's an Edomite, which you wouldn't be in the truth. All right? They're the only ones that committed blasphemy. Okay? <laughs> the Edomites. So you wouldn't be in the truth. And at this point, nothing I say would matter to you anyway. Okay? But your father's an Israelite. That's why you're in the truth, okay? So your father did not commit the sin of blasphemy. So all men of sin, as it is written, can be forgiven. So you can forgive your father. You want your Yahweh Hashem Yahshai to forgive you? You forgive your father. Make peace with your father. Because I know a lot of you niggas out there, and I got to call you niggas because you act like niggas. A lot of you are fucking hard-headed. Stop being hard-headed and make peace with your father. He that feareth the Lord will honor his faith. I'm sorry, he that fear of the Lord, I'm a little excited, he that fear of the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. <laughs> and that's what I got. I got a, my mother passed away, all right? She passed away. So it's all, all that's left now is my father. And my father gave me a blessing, man. He actually said, God will bless you, son. God, he said it twice. He blew my mind when he said that, man. Okay? He said, God will bless you, son. That's all I had to hear. I was on cloud nine then. I was feeling like Superman. Okay? My father <laughs> acknowledged. And then, you know, my father, when I talked to him, he, he'll call me Mr. You know, the family last name, Atkins. You know, Mr. Atkins. I was like, damn, that my father talking to me like that? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> hey, brothers, I'm telling you, the joy that I feel right now, you'll feel that joy when you start to honor your father. Trust me. Okay? And the hell with me, trust the scriptures. But I'm speaking the scriptures. Honor your father, brothers. Honor your father. Stop being a fucking nigger. Honor your father. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. For the blessing of the Father establisheth 
the houses of children. That's what you want. Hey, in the past, it was it was it was paramount for a son to get the blessing of his father. Why you think uh, Esau cried like a bitch, man? He wanted that blessing from his father. And what blessing did Esau get? He got the blessing of the sword, right? From Isaac, his father. Jacob wanted that blessing too. So you want to get a blessing from your father, man. Let's say your father's on his deathbed. He's about to die. He's in hospice or, or, or whatever. You know, they put you in hospice right before you die, right? Right, you, right before you're about to die. Go to that hospice and, 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 and hug your father, man. Grab your father. You know, if you feel like it, shed a tear with your father. You know? You know, anoint your father. Put a blessing on your father. Hey, if you're smart, that's what you're going to do. Okay? Because that's how you get a blessing. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse... <clears throat> Excuse me. But the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father. And we already explained why our fathers did what they did to us. Because they were under the curses, man. We're supposed to be the bigger man and understand that. Our fathers don't understand it, but we do. So when you come to your father and he might look at you like, nigga, what you want? You know, he might th even think that you want to square off with him. That's when you, you surprise the hell out of him and you grab him and say, Dad, I love you. Pop, I love you. You know, I love you, Pop. And you know why you're saying it. Because you're in this truth, man. And you want that blessing from your how about Shimiao Shai. Anyway, glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. Did you hear that? Glory not in the dishonor of thy father. Like that stupid nigga Yummy and put a curse on his father. Boasted about, and then the nigga was boasted about how, I remember too, he was boasting about how he put a curse on his father. Not too long after that, he gets shot in the back. He almost died. Okay? So learn from that lesson, brothers. Learn from that lesson. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. Let me read that again. For the glory of a man is from the, the honor, not the dishonor, the honor of his father. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. But we're talking about the father here. We ain't talking about the mother. Okay? Like I said, Jake ain't got no problem honoring his mother. We're talking about the father. We're talking about pops. Okay? My son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. <laughs> How you get around that? And if his understanding fail, like many of our fathers do, because they ain't got the truth like we got the truth, our, our understanding ain't going to fail because we got the truth. But if his understanding fail, let's read on. Have patience with him. There you go. How you get around that? So I don't want to hear no fucking reason why you can't get along with your father. If you come on my comment board and you put, oh, well, you know, my pops, I'm going to block your ass, all right? I don't want to hear it. Make peace with your father, man. And if his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. <laughs> How you get around that, huh? For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. Not be forgotten by who? Yahweh Bar Shem Shai. That's why you're doing it. You want to gain brownie points with Yahweh Bar Shem Shai. You want those blessings. For the relieving of thy father shall not be for forgotten, and instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. Woo! <laughs> How you get around that? In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Yeah, how you treated your father. Thy sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. Check that out. He that forsaketh his father is a blasphemer. And he that angereth his mother is cursed of the Most High. So there you go, brothers. Make peace with your father. In the conclusion of this lesson, I'll say it again. Make peace with your father. No excuses. Make peace with your father.